Hi, and uh, I'm Dr. Sakib Bansur uh, from uh, Learning and Happy Channel. And uh, we are presenting a series of videos on uh, Adamnet. And uh, today's topic is deep cervical fascia, fascia cola. So uh, it uh, has six facial layers, the deep cervical fascia, and it uh, these are the uh, following six layers. Uh, first of all, it is the investing layer, that is the pretracheal layer, that is a prevertebral layer, and is the carotid sheath, buccopharyngeal fascia, and fringopisular fascia. These are the six facial layers of the deep fascia of the neck, fascia cola. And uh, the benefit of these facial layers is that they provide our uh, natural cleavage planes through which tissues may be separated during surgery. They are a barrier to the spread of abscesses, that is collection of pus resulting from infections. If they are not here, the abscesses could spread unlimited to various parts of the neck and down to the cortex into the mediastinum causing very serious problems. And uh, they provide uh, slipperiness, like uh, when we swallow and uh, do movements of the head and neck. So this fascia um, uh, provides uh, uh, various uh, uh, help uh, needed to do that. Will I will explain with you very soon. So uh, we'll do some spotting of the this fascia. This uh, first layer, of course, we'll discuss is uh, first of all. This is the investing fascia investing fish this is here you could see this is the anterior um, part of the investing fascia right and uh, this here it is the posterior part right and we will uh, discuss its attachments investing fascia superior attachments inferior attachments anterior and posterior very soon and uh, this is the investing fascia and then is the uh, pretracheal fascia pretracheal fascia of course this is that fascia which um, encloses this thyroid gland pretracheal this is the thyroid gland and it encloses this thyroid gland and this fascia is a pretracheal layer right so it forms its uh, capsule of the, this thyroid gland false capsule and uh, Right, so it's concerned with its movement. So this is the second uh, fascia, which is the pretracheal. And uh, you could see another structure. This is the higher bone. It would be discussed in the attachments, right? This is the mandible. This is the symphysis manta, and this is the higher bone. And uh, this is the larynx, and this is the thyroid isthmus, right? You identify all these things and uh, then uh, the third layer is the prevertebral layer of course this is that layer which is in front of the vertebra so this is the prevertebral layer right and uh, then we uh, move back so we can trace the other fascia which are the uh, prevertebral right and uh, here you could see another term which is the alar fascia and then the fourth fascia is a carotid sheath which is formed by the condensation of fascia around the certain vessels and nerves like the vagus nerve and the internal carotid artery the jugular again so i will tell in, in detail discuss with you so this is the alar fascia right so that is the point so this is a uh, space, the neutrophil space, very important potential space involved in the spread of the infection. So this is the uh, various points and uh, this is again, you can again, uh, this um, identify, this is the prevertebral fascia. And you see another fascia, buccopharyngeal fascia. This is the buccopharyngeal fascia. This in fact is the part of this prevertebral fascia, this buccopharyngeal fascia. We'll discuss each and every fascia separately. And uh, then the last another is uh, our uh, this fascia, which is a uh, fringo fascia. So these are the six fascia. So we will discuss them individually 
one by one in detail. So uh, first of all, of course, this is the investing layer discussion. This layer is the most superficial one and it surrounds the entire like neck like a collar and it is deep to the skin and the subcutaneous tissue. So this is the superior attachments of the investing layer. It is the external occipital protuberance and the superior knuckle lines and the mastoid process and the external acoustic meatus, zygomatic arches and the mandible base. Here you could see the superior attachments. You could see, yes, it extends from this superiorly from this um, external occipital protuberance laterally. Here it goes. This is the superior knuckle lines. And as it moves on, this is the mastoid process. As it moves on, this is the zygomatic arch. And uh, then onwards, this is the our base of the mandible. This is various. This is enumerated over here, right? And here you could trace that um, attachments. So you note at this point between um, inferior to the uh, this mandible between uh, this angle of the mandible, here is the angle of the mandible and this mastoid process, this investing layer splits into two the lamina, the superficial and deep, and uh, it encloses the parotid gland. It forms its capsule, uh, it's, which is very tightly adherent to the uh, parotid gland, sort of unyielding attachment. So that is the point whenever there is a swelling in the parotid gland, it is very painful due to the unyielding uh, nature of the uh, this investing layer of the fascia to that gland. And when um, again we go uh, when uh, here to the this point of the uh, sub uh, this uh, mandible and below that is this, this, this fascia also encloses the submandibular gland. So there are two glands associated with this. Um, our investing layer, it, is, it encloses these two glands. This is the submandibular gland and the parotid gland. And you note one thing that uh, there is another thickening of this fascia, the investing fascia, between this uh, stylite process and uh, then the our angle of the this mandible. This is the stylomandibular ligament, which um, it contains the external carotid artery. In fact, this external carotid artery pierces it. This separates the, the our stylomandibular ligament, this parotid gland from the submandibular gland. That is the point, right? And uh, then um, we know that already there is a trapezius muscle and um, not shown over here. This is the sternocleidomastoid. This is the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. These two muscles are enclosed by uh, about this uh, investing layer. So this is, uh, I told you already. So inferior attachments of the investing layer of the fascia coli. And um, this is the manubrium of the sternum, the clavicles, spine of the scapula, and the acromion of the scapula. Here you could see all these attachments. This is the spine of the scapula. This is acromion, spine and acromion. And as we move anteriorly, uh, here is the clavicle. And then this manubrium. These are four um, um, structures um, for the inferior attachment of the uh, this fascia: manubrium, clavicle, acromion, and spine of the scapula. And uh, then are the posterior attachments of the investing layer. This is the C7 spinous process, vertebra prominence. Of course, if it is attached to its periosteal. Uh, layer and the knuckle ligament or the uh, ligamentum knuckle. So the anterior attachments of the investing layer are to the symphysis manti and the hyoid bone. Here you could see again in uh, you know this picture, right? This is the investing fascia anteriorly, and here this is the hyoid, and this is the symphysis manti. This is the attachment, and here you could see, as you could see the one this suprasternal space. So there are two species related with this investing fascia. It encloses two species. One is above the sternum. This is the suprasternal space, space of burns. And another is the supraclavicular space, supraclavicular space. 
so these are the two spaces so we again discuss the structures enclosed by investing fascia what are the muscles these are the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles and uh, they are um, having a common embryological region supplied by the ninth cranial nerve the spinal part of the accessory nerve and of course they have the similar attachments to the cranium and inferiorly into the uh, pelvic girdle into the pelvic girdle into the sorry this uh, pectoral girdle so this is the structures enclosed by the investing fascia the slivery glands the parotid gland and the submandibular gland i told you already and uh, this is the spaces i told you suprasternal and the supraclavicular space this is the suprasternal space it lies between these layers it contains anterior jugular veins jugular venous arch fat and some deep limb nodes so, so these structures are present in the suprasternal space space of pons and then the supraclavicular space which contains external jugular vein supraclavicular nerves and the cutaneous vessels along with lymphatic so this was about the investing layer and we move to the next layer which is the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia so this thin layer is present only in the anterior part of the neck it extends inferiorly from the hyoid into the thorax where it blends with the fibrous pericordium covering the heart the pretracheal layer of the fascia includes a thin muscular part which encloses of course infrahyoid muscle and a visceral part which encloses the thyroid gland trachea and the esophagus and is continuous posteriorly and superiorly with the buccopharyngeal fascia i told you already that the, this buccopharyngeal fascia in fact is a part of the pretracheal fascia so this is the point you could see again right this pictures are show pasted again so we are studying this pre tracheal fascia and uh, you see in this uh, uh, picture this is the uh, again uh, this is the like you know one fascia this is the alar fascia right and this is told you this is the uh, your buccopharyngeal fascia right so this is the uh, two points to be noted over here and uh, then this is the pretracheal layer we talking about pretracheal layer so this is the uh, thyroid and uh, this uh, pretracheal layer it encloses this thyroid and uh, from above this point to this this is the the over this uh, pretracheal layer of the fascia coli it encloses this thyroid gland I told you already and the trachea esophagus and continuous posterior and superior with the buccofemoral fascia there it is right and uh, this is the um, uh, layout already explained to you right and uh, then uh, we have to um, talk further about it that uh, the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia plans laterally with the carotid sheath and superior to the hyoid a thickening of the pretracheal fascia forms a pulley or trochlea through which the intermediate tendon of the digastric muscle passes suspending the hyoid by wrapping around the lateral border of the intermediate tendon of the omohyoid the pretracheal layer also tethers the two bellied omohyoid muscle redirecting the course of the muscle between the bells so the two muscles involved here the omohyoid and the digastric forming the is pulis by the fascia that is this again pre vertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia this is pre vertebral of course it lies in front of the pre vertebral muscles in front of the vertebra so it forms a tubular sheath for the vertebral column and the muscles associated with it such as the longus coli and the longus capitus anteriorly the scalenae laterally and the deep cervical muscles posteriorly so the prevertebral layer of the deep fascia is fixed to the cranial base superiorly 
inferiorly plants with the endothoracic fascia, peripherally and fuses with the anterior longitudinal ligament centrally at approximately the T3 vertebra. The prevertebral fascia extends laterally as the axillary sheath, which surrounds the axillary vessels and brachial plexus. And precisely, it does not enclose the axillary vein. Vein is outside the axillary sheath for its pre expansion if the venous return is increased. The cervical parts of the sympathetic trunks are embedded in the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia, right? So uh, now uh, let's talk about uh, this, um, our, uh, to see the picture of the prevertebral fascia. Yes, here it is, right? So this is the, uh, your, uh, these uh, vertebra and uh, the, this is the prevertebral fascia. Here it is, this is the prevertebral fascia in front of the is pre-vertebral muscles. This is the pre-vertebral fascia. Here it is again. This is the vertebrae, and this would be the word this pre-vertebral fascia. So the carotid sheath, what is this? This is a tubular facial covering that extends from the cranial base to the root of the neck. The sheath plants anteriorly with the investing and the pre-tracheal. Layers of the fascia. The sheath plans anteriorly with the investing fascia and the pretracheal fascia and posteriorly with the prevertebral fascia. So, this is the you see the picture here. Yes, you can see this. This is the carotid sheath. This is on both sides. So, you see anteriorly what is that? Here you can see the various structures. We'll talk about you identify that first. This is the alar fascia. And uh, this is the um, carotid sheath. And uh, if you see here, uh, this is the various muscles like this uh, sternohyoid, sternothyroid. This is the sternocleidomastoid over here, right? These are the various muscles. So this is the carotid sheath. And uh, note it's blending with the surrounding fascia, which I am talking about with you. And this is the you identify this is a very very important the largest space of the neck retropharyngeal space it's very important and the largest one of that it involves in the uh, spread of infection so that was our discussion so this again uh, right from the start the carotid sheath right we discussed this tubular facial covering that extends from the cranial base to the root of the neck so contents of the carotid sheath, common and internal carotid arteries. This here are the contents. This is the common carotid artery. This is the internal jugular vein and the vagus nerve. With the three main contents: common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and the vagus nerve. And you see, this is the anterior part of that, and uh, there is embedded in its anterior wall this the ansa cervicalis. Yes, it is embedded in its anterior wall of the our carotid sheath. This is right-sided carotid sheath. And in the posterior relation of this carotid sheath, there lies the sympathetic trunk. This was the view from in sectional view. And this is the view from above. This is view from above. You see, this is the sheath and having this internal carotid artery, and this is the our internal jugular vein, and this is the vagus nerve. So this is the contents. And also the carotid sinus nerve, some deep cervical lymph nodes, and the sympathetic nerve fibers, carotid periarterial plexus. So these were the contents of the carotid sheath. If carotid sheath and the pretracheal fascia communicate fully with the mediastinum of the thorax, Superiorly and the cranial cavity superiorly, and these communications represent potential pathways for the spread of infection and extravasated blood. Now, this I showed you the retropharyngeal space. I told you this is the largest and most important space. So, of course, this is a potential space filled with connective tissue and present between the visceral part of the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia 
and the buccofringeal fascia surrounding the pharynx superficially right so inferiorly the buccofringeal fascia is continuous with the pretracheal layer of the deep cervical fascia so what is alar fascia showed you the picture of the alar fascia you see again this is alar fascia this is here it is right it is um, also shown already in the previous pictures so what is this it divides the retropharyngeal space further the thin layer attached along the midline of the buccopharyngeal fascia from the cranium to the level of the t7 vertebra from this attachment it extends laterally and terminates in the carotid sheath you see again this this is going this this is the retropharyngeal space this and this divides this inner fascia this retropharyngeal space further and here it is blending on each side with the carotid sheath so the retropharyngeal space allows movement of the related viscera relative to the vertebral column during swallowing so this is closed the space is closed medially by the skull base and on each side by the carotid sheath it opens inferiorly into the superior mediastinum yes this so this is the thing so this is the retro, the retropharyngeal space so this this is the alar fascia shown separately and then a few words about the buccopharyngeal fascia it covers a muscle of the pharynx which is the superior constrictor muscle which is on its outer aspect and superiorly it, it reaches the outer aspect of the muscle which muscle of the facial expression the buccinate pharyngo basilar fascia what is that so last six number facial layer of the um, fascia coli it is the thickening of the fascia extending from superior constrictor muscle upper part upper border to the cranial base it is lying deep to the muscle of the pharynx pharyngo basilar fascia so these were the uh, all layers of the invas uh, the this uh, fascia coli deep cervical fascia deep fascia of the neck, neck lying deep to the skin and the superficial fascia some um, I, if you recall uh, the platysma muscle in this regard that's good platysma is present and then you recall these two muscles the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius which in the next uh, topics we will discuss in the formation of the necks of the uh, the triangles of the neck the anterior and the posterior triangles so very few words about the clinical anatomy so first of all uh, you see uh, the spread of infection in neck very important um, this is that's why i discussed in detail the attachments of the various fascia and it planning and especially its connection with the mediastinum so the investing layer it prevents a spread of abscesses caused by the tissue destruction this is the very important role of the investing layer so it uh, helps in preventing spread of abscesses if an infection occurs between the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and the muscular part of the pretracheal fascia around the infrahyoid muscles the infection will usually not spread beyond the superior edge of the manubrium of the sternum if the infection occurs between the investing fascia and the visceral part of the pretracheal fascia it can spread into the thoracic cavity anterior to the pericardium so pus from an abscess posterior to the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia may extend laterally in the neck and form a swelling posterior to the sternocleidomastoid the pus may perforate the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia and get entry into the retropharyngeal space produces a bulge in the pharynx which is the retropharyngeal abscess which can be cause dysphagia and dysarthria dysphagia is difficulty in swallowing and dysarthria is difficulty in speaking so infection from head if there is an infection in the head it can also spread inferiorly posterior to the esophagus and enter the posterior the uh, mediastinum so head infection can spread inferiorly posterior to the esophagus and can enter the um, posterior part of the mediastinum and also another route can be spreading anterior to the trachea 
and enter the anterior mediastinum. Infection in the retrofranial space can spread inferiorly into the superior mediastinum. So air from a ruptured trachea, bronchus or esophagus will, that will be called as a pneumomediastinum. So that can pass superiorly in the neck. And the last, this is the parotid swellings. As we told, this, this is the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia covers this parotid gland, which is very tightly bound to the gland, which is unyielding nature. So, uh, there, so if there is a swelling, so it could be very painful. So I thank you uh, very much for uh, uh, this um, uh, listening to my lecture on this uh, fascia coli. And um, so very soon we'll be coming up with the triangles of the neck. Thank you very much and uh, stay tuned. Goodbye. So kind.